welcome to Simulated Atlanta International Airport, and welcome to a PMDG 737. Did you know on a 737-900ER, the tire pressure for that nose wheel should be 208 PSI? It says so right there on the landing gear. Hello, my name is Dave. Welcome to the channel. Welcome if you're new. I hope you are doing well. I do the spy flight over on Twitch. And every now and then I like to come on over here to do uh, to YouTube and do what I call a complete cold and dark video. And that is from start to finish the entire flight. We got something new to talk about when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the uh, PMDG 737. It's called the EFB. Okay, they call it the UFT. And yeah, guess what? It has finally arrived. Okay, EFB stands for electronic flight bag. UFT is universal flight tablet. That's a PMDG thing. Uh, we're gonna do a whole whole full, full flight here. Cold and dark, everything you need to know. Add-ons that I'm using, Navigraph, I'm using SimBrief. I also have Payware for uh, Jacksonville. And I also am using the default airport for uh, Atlanta Hartsfield International Airport. I'm using real world weather and time. We are gonna talk about how to use the EFB, UFD, uh, and also your FMS together. And also we'll spend just a second on choosing the right runway at uh, Atlanta Hartsfield International Airport. Uh, so that's what we got going on. If you've never done one of these before, uh, one of the things that I like to suggest is please think about flying along with me. The great thing about YouTube, you can stop the video, pause the video, rewind the video, and go and see what buttons I might have pushed that you would uh, have missed. Then after you do this flight with me, I like to suggest maybe doing your own hometown flight in a few days. That kind of helps you remember all of the things that, uh, that maybe you've caught on to here. So what's our flight today? Atlanta to Jacksonville. So Atlanta, the airport is the uh, default. There is a brand new payware airport for Jacksonville. And considering over on uh, uh, VATSIM, some of the best ATC around is around Jacksonville. Probably worth your time to take a look at that. We're doing the Varsity 3 departure uh, and then the O'Day uh, arrival going into Jacksonville. Our cruise level for today is flight level 310. It's just about an hour and 20 minute flight, 247 miles. So all sorts of cool things to, uh, to take a look at here. Let's uh, head on out to the airplane. And uh, yep, there's all sorts of great information. And as you zoom in on these airplanes, you see all sorts of other information. Uh, inflation, brakes, all sorts of little things that PMDG has included, including the little thing on the nose wheel. And this is something that's on there. Since so the Boeing, up, oh, come on, the Boeing Airplane Company, Seattle, Washington. It's the Siri. I mean, this is the kind of detail that PMDG has put into the airplanes, and it's absolutely amazing. You can even kind of look up in here and see all the things that the real world pilots have to check when they're doing their walk around inspection. That's one of the things I've kind of noticed here is you can start doing all sorts of, uh, you could do a walk around with a lot of these airplanes these days and, uh, and see all the things that the real world pilots are looking at. It really, really is amazing. So let's go ahead and hop aboard the airplane and get started on today's flight. I've already gone and done the flight planning uh, over on, uh, on SimBrief. So there is our airplane, we're at the gate, and here we are in the best seat in the house. A Couple of things here, where's that universal flight tablet or the EFB? Right there, that's where you're gonna find it. How do you figure this thing out if you don't have it in your airplane? Really pretty simple. When you start up your airplane, you should, uh, it be, if it's cold and dark like this, the pilot's flight management computer should be up and running like you see, see there. Okay, so let's kind of come on over here and zoom in real tight. And you need to go to PMDG Setup, go to the aircraft, go to Equipment, and then using the page, page down pages, uh, pay, uh, previous page, so there's page 17, there's page 16, there's page 15, there's page 14. I think I may have gone past it. Hang on, let's go back over to page 16. Oh yeah, 16. So page 16 of 17 in optional equipment, flight tablet. There is a chance that your flight tablet is gonna be uh, off. So you'll have to turn that on. After that, I like to suggest return to setup and right here, right now, 
do a state save, panel state save, save it. And when you do, you're gonna have the opportunity to give it a name. I've called my startup states uh, spy. And that way, uh, when you come back to do this, uh, start the playing the next time, your tablet is going to be there, okay? And that's all that there is to it on this. There, you, you're all done, you're set. The, uh, the universal flight tablet should be there, all right. Uh, let's see, what else can we talk about? You might have noticed that I do have a couple of views set up here. Uh, one of the things is, is I use my uh, number pad an awful lot like we did over in X-Plane with Quick Views. You can set that up. There are several videos here on uh, YouTube about that. Uh, if you can't find it, leave a, leave, a, leave a comment or something, and I'll try and help you find a good video uh, on how to set up Quick Views. But it's really pretty easy. All right, so flight plan time, what do we do? Well, this is my cold and dark setup for the 737, and all of my 737s are set up like this. Two things, uh, everything's off. I do have a power cart uh, plugged in. So I do have a power cart plugged into uh, the airplane. So we have external power all ready to go. Over on the other side, I almost always have, I have all of my uh, main passenger doors open. So the passenger door is open. I did uh, pull out a jetway, which clearly didn't reach out to the airplane, but I'm sure they'll fix that someday. Uh, I also have chocks in place, and that's really about it. The rest of the airplane is as cold and as dark as I can make it. And so there we go. That is my cold and dark setup here on the 737. What's the first thing that I usually do? Well, the thing is, is you have to put gas in the airplane, just like in the car and everything else. So let's go ahead and get ready to fuel up the airplane. And the first thing that I will do is come on into the airplane and come down here. And as I said, the uh, FMC should be up and I'm gonna go to FS Actions. Okay, so here we are. And then after Actions, there's two ways to do this. You can uh, just put in fuel and payload and go. I usually go to ground services and you can see, ah, my power cart is plugged in. You can see my chocks are in place. Let's go to page two. And here is fuel. Over on your uh, flight plan, page one, you're gonna have your block fuel. This is how much gas we're putting in the airplane. 12,602 pounds. By the way, you're gonna probably notice this little, this little text file pop up every now and then. This is what I call the flight strip. It's just a simple notepad text file. And if you look in the description below, I've got that information in there for you. And you can cut and paste that into your own notepad and then use it any way you want. It's something I've been developing just to help me throughout the day and it works pretty good in a flight. So our uh, fuel is gonna be 12,000. So one, 12,602. And the first thing I do is I get the fuel truck rolling. Oh, so clear, 12,602, you have to put it in the target. Okay, now let's go ahead and request our op. There's our fuel. Let's go to page two. Passengers over on your flight plan. If you look over here on page three, we have 108 brave souls uh, flying with us today. So 108, and we're gonna do what uh, airline passengers normally do. We're gonna leave them at the gate and they're gonna wait a little bit. Now let's go over here to the next page. And this is cargo. You see there's front and aft cargo. And the cargo for today's flight is 5.9. Oh, odd numbers. It's easy to divide even numbers, but odd numbers, I'm sorry. It's early in the morning. I haven't had enough coffee. 5.9 divided by two is 2.95. For those of you that can do that in your head early in the morning, you have my respect and admiration. 2.59. 2 we'll put that in the front. 2.59 in the back. And then I'm going to request the baggage carts. Okay, here they come. Boy, I hope I did that right. So 2.59, right? Did I do I do I not know how to do division here? Or is my memory that bad? 5.9 divided by 2. You see? Yeah. Oh, 2.95. Okay, I mixed that up, didn't I? You see, you got to have your coffee to do a flight like this. Mm. 
Well, you know what? That is going to change our zero fuel weight a little bit. And you know what? Those kinds of changes happen. And I'll show you what, what to do when you've got a change in your zero fuel weight and stuff. Okay, so here come the baggage carts. Let's come on back here to page one and we can start fueling the airplane. And the airplane has begun fueling. At this point in time, uh, I feel like it's time to turn power in the airplane and look, you can see there's our fuel and there's a baggage cart over there and we're all set and ready to go. Let's go ahead and it's time to flip the switches. So the first button we're gonna do is the battery button. Battery goes on. On my way down the electrical panel, I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna do um, ground power and we're gonna do ground power. I'm gonna slide over here and do my emergency exit lights and guard those. I'm gonna keep sliding on down here and position strobe steady and steady. I'm gonna turn on my position lights. And that is just my first little, we're getting the airplane turned on. Now that we've done that, I'm gonna slide up here and we're gonna turn on the window heaters. Window heat goes on. And I'm also then gonna go and turn up the panel brightness. This is integrated lighting or the back lighting on the instrument panel up there. It just makes it a little bit easier to read the panel. While the airplane is powering up, let's go down to the pedestal and I'm gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do the panel brightness and I'm gonna go ahead and turn that all the way up. And then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna look down and we're gonna do the main panel. And I'm gonna turn the brightness up there. I might add uh, two or three clicks of back background brightness and two clicks over on the auto flight. That's this light over here. And those are basically the lights. While the airplane continues to power up, I'm going to look down here and I'm going to do what we what I call jiggle the controls. OK, you, we all have USB controllers and sometimes they pick the most inconvenient moments to disconnect. So I'm just going to go and make sure that my side stick works, my rudder pedals work, and I'm going to try and move my throttles. OK, and if that works, that says, OK, at least I know one day I didn't do this sort of thing and tried to take off and I didn't have the yoke, the, the side stick disconnected. So I was able to take off using trim, but, and the reason I do this now is because some airplanes do not respond well if you plug in, uh, plug or unplug a USB during flight. The CRJ, if you do that, it shuts down the engines. Surprise. Okay, now that the airplane's coming up, we're gonna clear the caution, which we'll do a hundred times on power up and come on down to the electronic flight bag. And now let's go ahead and request data from SimBrief. And there's our flight, M uh, there's our alternate MCO. And our company route is Atlanta to Jax. And that looks pretty good. We can go ahead and do our weather. There's our latest weather. And as the map slowly starts to load in there, this is going to be the Google map. Um, apparently in the past, I don't know if it's been fixed yet. Uh, if you have Navigraph, switch the map if you possibly can, because apparently uh, there's some sort of a bug with the Google. So there you go. And you might even zoom your little map in just a bit. OK, so we got that done. Now the airplane's coming to life here. I usually have the co-pilot handle the uh, setup stuff. So PMD FS actions, ground services. We still have ground power. Hey, look at that. The fuel is flowing pretty good up. Oh, the passengers are waiting. Good. And look at this. We can start the uh, baggage loading too. So let's go ahead and let the bag start loading and the airplane continues to come to life. Let's go ahead and do a few more things. We're going to turn on the recirculating fans in case the co-pilot went to Taco Bell. That can be kind of nasty. And then we'll come on over here and we could also set our cruise altitude. Sometimes it's better to wait until after you get your clearance, but uh, we're not doing that. So let's just go and set our cruise altitude. And that's 31,000 feet today. There's 31,000 feet uh, over on Navigraph. You can come over here and go to your arrival airport and you can see that uh, the arrival airport is 30 feet above sea level. Uh, this moves in increments of 50 feet. So you got to do a little rounding here. Let's see. Can I uh, go down a little bit? No. 
Can I go down just a little here? There we go. Now it's easier to see. So landing altitude. There's 50 feet or no feet. So rounding, we'll choose 50 feet. That's closer. And we got that going too. Now we can come down here to the pilot side and bags are loading, fuel is flowing, passengers are waiting. Let's do the FMC. And you can see our nav data is good and up to date. Position in it time. We are at KAT. Uh oh, you see the two little arrows like that? They go out each way. That's GSX. Let's just turn, disengage GSX. And now those two little uh, arrows are gone. So K A T L, Hotlanta International Airport. We are at gate T14. Let's see if it knows gate T14. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Oh, look at that, it does. If it doesn't know that, it's gonna say not in database. No problem, just delete that out, go to the next page, grab a GPS position, and you'll put that into the scratch pad. And then look all the way up to the top panel here, way up, and then you're gonna take these uh, to uh, the left and right IRSs, put it on nav, and you can, you can watch the lights flash. It's gonna go on DC and then align, and then look back down here, and soon the boxes are gonna show up. And there's the boxes. So grab your uh, uh, latitude and longitude of the gate or GPS position, put it in the scratch pad, and put it in there, and the alignment has begun. Root page. So it does remember ATL. You can put that up there and you can go and request a flight plan. And now with the electronic flight bag, it's going to go out to SimBrief and get your flight plan. So click that one. Now, the thing about the PMDG is after you click it, it shows you your list and then goes back to the main page. So I just usually wait. And there we are, K-A-T-L, K-J-A-X. There is our flight. And Atlanta to Jax, 234 miles. We're going to select that flight. And there we go. And our airplane continues to come to life. And we'll look over here. How's the baggage doing? Baggage is good. Passengers are waiting. Fuel, oh, look at this. Fuel is done flowing. So I'm gonna release the fuel truck and let the fuel truck go away. And the root uplink is now ready. Let's load that. Since the fueling is done, I'm gonna go over here and turn on the left aft fuel pump. And then we're going to come on in here, and I'm going to turn on the APU. Let's get some uh, ventilation here going. It's Atlanta. Might be uh, uh, winter time, but, you know, still get stuffy in Atlanta, right? Root data uplink is now in there. And you can see we now have two pages. I'm going to put in our flight number, UAL flight 441, and that goes in there. Uh, it's not important on this airplane right now, but as we slowly roll out, roll out things like CPDLC uh, in other airplanes, putting your flight number in there is important. You can look over and check page two and see, up oh, that is our flight plan. Looks pretty good. So we're going to activate it and execute it. And that looks good too. Coming on up here, uh, looks like the uh, APU is ready to go. And what we're gonna do here is, let's uh, see, do we have duct pressure yet? The APU bleed is on, the isolation valve is open, we do not have duct pressure yet. Oh, look at that! There comes duct pressure. So either, you know, you can make a foul joke about a mallard with your duct pressure, or you could just turn on the packs and not tell bad jokes. And now with ventilation in the airplane, we can come on down here, go to page two. Our passengers have waited long enough. We're gonna start boarding passengers. We're gonna look over here and see that the baggage is done. So I'm gonna release the baggage carts. And if you've got a second, you could come outside and see, up oh, there's your baggage carts. It's closing the uh, forward uh, baggage door and the cart's gonna drive away and you can enjoy that uh, for a little bit of immersion too. Now that passengers are boarding, oh, look at this, amazing. Another caution light. I swear, modern jetliners, when you're powering them up, if somebody goes to the bathroom, there's a caution light. I don't mean to be that cranky about it, but I haven't had enough coffee yet, so I get to whine, right? Okay, there goes the uh, baggage handling carts are leaving. Passengers are boarding. 
and airplanes uh, fuel is gone so everything is good to go while passengers are boarding at this point in time we could do our departure and arrival so if we've gotten our clearance you might notice that they don't tell you about your runway for departure there we are at t14 and here is hotlanta international airport and if you look at the flight plan our good old buddy sim brief has suggested runway 26 left for departure well guess what that is not the runway that we're using we're going to be on the varsity three departure for here so here at good old atlanta international airport you kind of have to look at one extra chart to find out which runway you're using now, a ATC will sometimes tell you, but sometimes they just don't have time during a big event. So go over to airports, go to Atlanta, go to charts, and go to SID. Okay, and then the third chart down, chart 10-3-1. I've got it down here already. That's this thing here. There is that chart. And this is how you figure out what your runway is going to be for your departure at good old Atlanta. And sometimes they actually put a link to this chart uh, uh, out on the internet uh, with your clearance. So remember, we're taking the varsity departure, and that is called a south departure. And if they're using both runways, dual, dual departures, or three runways, you choose which one. So varsity is south, south and east departures, you use runway 27 right or 9. Well, good old sim brief gave us two six left. Wrong. So we're going to do instead two seven right. So I'm going to come over here and put in two seven right in my flight notes. Two seven right. I'm going to correct that in my notes right now. So we're all ready to go. So that's how you figure out what your runway is uh, here at Atlanta. So now we can go and do departure and arrival. Departure and arrival. Our departure today is going to be, we now know, and I'm going to look at my notes because I forget because I haven't had enough coffee, 27 right. 27 right. We are going to be on the varsity departure. So there is varsity three. And Nokia or Nuki, Noki, Nuki, uh, whatever. I'm not trying to be crude, rude, and socially unacceptable. I haven't had coffee and execute that. Coming on in on a shorter flight, I will go ahead and put in the arrival. If it's a longer flight, I'm going to wait because sometimes that has been known to change. And right now it looks like we're going to do the ILS Yankee to runway eight. ILS Yankee runway eight. This is going to be the O'Day one arrival. There is O'Day 1, and this is going to be via Dutchie. And then the transition, that's sometimes a little bit uh, hard to figure out. And this one's a little hard. So coming on in, we're going to runway 8. And so we're coming over here at CDOT. And the reason I know CDOT is I looked up here and said, runway 8 from Kippel to C dot radar vectors blah 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 so I know that this is the right transition so there's C dot but then if you look over here I looked through the charts and I didn't see a direct connection to runway 8's ILS so I just grabbed this one because I guess we're going to do vectors from C dot to Libby or something like that so that's what I'm expecting right now and that means, as I look over here, I don't see the transition that's listed. So I'm going to go. I'm not going to use that transition. And let's execute that. Okay, that's looking pretty good. How's everything going with our passengers? Passengers are, oh, 80. They're moving on up there. So as we get to be to around 20, uh, era, uh, 20 passengers, I'm going to go over here and we're going to go and disconnect ground power and we're going to go ahead and put the APU generator on. I'm going to do the APU generator first, then I'm going to disconnect ground power. Okay, so now that we've got that, I'm going to look down here and we're going to come over here and go back to ground power, release my ground power. I'm also going to come down here and I'm going to put on my parking brakes. And again, this is just to get me out of the gate as quickly as I can. By now, I've got my um, 
uh, clearance. So we're going to go and squawk uh, 0, 4, 4, 1. There we go. Now then, we get to go and do some EFB fun stuff. So all of this is looking good. By the way, you can also go and get your charts here with Navigraph. I have the Navigraph app on my desktop. And since I make videos on YouTube and live stream on Twitch, I just prefer to use the Navigraph charts app. But I think that these kinds of charts like this are really nice. And for immersion, I think this is great. So anyway, we're gonna go back over here. We can go ahead and there is the Jacksonville. There is our arrival, ATIS. Uh, or um, METAR, and it says the altimeter is 3013. Let's put that in. 3013. There is our altimeter. And now we're going to get out of this, and we're going to come over to the performance tool. And this is brand new. This is so cool. Really enjoy using this. Atlanta Hartsfield. We now know that our departure runway is going to be runway 27 right. So let's go and get 27 right. 27. Oh, come on. 27 right. There we go. And that's going to give us the elevation, the runway heading, the slope, and you choose the runway condition. It is dry here in Atlanta. We could also import the weather. It's probably not going to update right now, but I am not going to import this yet, okay? And if we do, it's going to go and get the aircraft as it is. Well, if we look over here, we are still boarding. Oh, passengers are done boarding. So now that the passengers are done boarding, that's different. But if you'd st started to go and do uh, the uh, takeoff numbers while the passengers were still, still boarding, it would grab the current zero fuel weight and not that now if you import from opf that's fine but remember there's a change in the baggage so we're not going to do that so with passengers aboard now we can go ahead and import from the airplane there's our weight there's our cg i'm going to go takeoff flaps optimum and rating i am going to go to takeoff one and save a little bit of gas today and so all of that looks good. Anti-ice is off. Packs are going to be on. And now we can calculate. And there it is. Wow, this is so cool. This gives us our acceleration height. Flaps are going to be 5. Rating is takeoff 1. Selected temperature 53. There is our trim setting. And now we got the V speeds. So again, really enjoy that. Let's come on over here to the flight management computer. Over here on legs, we've got uh, RNAV slaw. I'll remind you about RNAV slaw in just a second. And then there is our flight. After CDOT, it's Libby. So remember, as we come on over here, we have CDOT and then Libby and all of that. So there's a little discontinuity in between there. In this case, I bet we could close it, but you don't always want to close every discontinuity. And I'm starting to kind of leave these in for a while. So let's leave it in this time. And then last page is Mr. Approach, and all that looks good. Let's go back into the route and performance in it time. Our uh, cruise altitude today is going to be flight level 310. 310. Our cruise winds, where do you get that? That's over on the flight plan, page one. Average wind, cruise wind, mean wind, all mean the same thing. 300 degrees at 34 knots. So 300 degrees at 34 knots. There we go. Cost index. Uh, let's see, we are going to have a cost index of 80. So our cost index is 80. Our reserves, I usually go down to the bottom and get final reserve and alternate fuel, and that's gonna be 5.5. If it's a bigger number uh, after that, for those first two, I'll put it in. So it's gonna be 5.58 is reserves. And now with all the passengers and bags aboard, I'm gonna hit the ZFW button, and it should be the same thing that we saw over 
in the flight management computer and now we can go and do our N1 limits. The selected temperature is going to be 53 degrees. So 53 degrees. We are going to derate to take off one and let's also save a little on climb one too. And then take off page. Over here it says our flaps are gonna be five. So five degrees of flaps. Uh, there's two ways to do the center of gravity. I usually just take the, uh, let the airplane give me its center of gravity. Notice the trim 4.47 and 4.47 are the same. So once that happens, sometimes I forget to do the trim. So let's come on over here. There's four. And that's about 4.4, I think. So there's, a, I set the trim. And then speeds for takeoff. 139, 141, 147. 139, 140. Oh, look at that. They're the same. Amazing. So we can just click those in like that. Takeoff is done here too. Uh, passengers are aboard. Let's return. Go to the doors. And I'm going to go ahead and close my 1L door. While the 1L do door is closing, I'm going to get old GSX to help me out here. And we are going to prepare for pushback and departure. While that's going on, I'm going to remind myself of which way we're going. So here we all are at Tango 14. We know that we're going to use, use 27 right. So 27 right is south. So we're going to push nose left, tail right. Hello, Captain. We're ready for pushback. Hey, guess what? We're ready to get pushback. Thank you so much. Doors are closed, so seatbelts can go on. I'm also going to turn on my hydraulic pumps and just leave everything alone here for a, a few more seconds. Final preparations down here. Uh, let's see. V2 is 147. V ref is 139. So let's go put that 147 up here. That's usually just my first speed, and that's as a reminder. VNAV is going to take over this for me. Our runway heading for departure is on your charts, and that's going to be 275 degrees. 275. Ah, here we go. Nose left, tail right. 275. Altitude. What do you do for your initial cleared altitude? Almost always, you know, your clearance is going to say climb via the SID, and they don't give you an altitude. If they don't give you an altitude, that means ATC is expecting you to look over on your charts and find the top altitude. It's different on every chart. You have to look at it, but there you go. So 10,000 feet, 10,000 feet, 275, 147. I've got the uh, uh, altimeter set. This is when I go and turn on my flight directors. And at that point, as we get ready to go, I'm also going to go ahead and turn on my anti-collision lights. My brakes are set, so we're going to do the last thing over here with the ground stuff, and I'm going to remove my chocks. Locking gear. They are, uh, GSX will not pull your chocks for you, and so you have to pull your chocks before they're going to go and lock up the landing gear. Okay, everything's looking pretty good so far. All of our speeds are in, so that looks good. The next thing that I am been doing is I'll go over here and I'm going to go back to the EFB. And even after everything that I said, I'm going to go over here and go to departure. I'm going to do airport. Uh-oh, it changed. Release parking brakes. And we're going to go to airports. And I'm just going to go over and get the airport page. And then we'll go to pinned and airports and I'm going to grab that over here and just have this here. I'm going to change it to nighttime. I'm going to make it big and that way I've just got this over here. It's the way the real pilots are going to do it and I just kind of like having this over here. So we're going to push back, taxi out Lima, Juliet and probably Lima Charlie which is the way we usually do that when there's ATC. Okay, everything's good. I think it's almost time to go. Are we ready to go? I think so. Let's go ahead and ring the bell. Let the cabin crew know that we're going to start rolling the airplane around. There we go. And parking brakes are going off. 
Scorching bush. All engines clear. Start at will. And here we go. As we go on out here, let's go ahead and do the rest of our fuel pumps. Forward and aft, left and right. And we're going to go over here and we're going to turn off the packs. We're going to look down here and we're going to go and ground start engine number two. Look down here, see if the starter valve is open. Look down here, we'll watch the oil pressure go up. We'll also have a quick look here. 25%, I believe, on a 737. So at 25% N2, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, slows down as you get to 25 and fuel. As that's going on, you can come on out here and you can see your engines are starting up. If you wonder when they're going to stop your pushback, when this person stops, when your crew chief stops, that's usually a good indicator that your pushback's about ready to stop. Push your tow brakes in, pull the parking brake lever, we're ready to go. We have a good engine start. You can disconnect. All right, that looks good. Uh, we should have been on transponder, squawking transponder. And we got a good start on engine number two. How about ground start engine one? Ground start, starter valve is open, N2 starts to rise, slide over here, watch the oil temperature and oil pressure go up. Oil pressure starts going up, then goes back down. Chances are you got an oil leak and that can be a problem. 22, 23, 24, 25 and fuel. And here comes engine number one. Our crew chief's gonna go and remove the gear pin. Tow truck disconnected. Bypass pin removed. Left is clear. Right is clear. And grabs the gear pin, walks away. Got the gear pin. Out we go. I don't know what it is when you're kind of panning around and stuff. It moves around funky. Okay, can't go out anymore. There we go. Okay, two important things in the real world of airlines. Hi, look at this. I have your gear pin. See, it's in my hands. And then the last thing you're going to do is get a wave. Air airlines like United call that the salute and release from guidance. And they say don't ever move an airplane until you have gotten those. Otherwise, that means that they have not inspected the underside of your airplanes for tools or people or bunny rabbits, and that could be a problem. And over here, we got two good starts on our engines. I'm going to get my packs turned on first because I care about the comfort of my passengers. Sorry, Captain Sarcastic's going to kick in now that the coffee's kicking in. Next thing I'm going to do is get on the uh, engine generators. Engine generators are looking pretty good. As all of this happens, we'll do the isolation valve on the uh, APU bleed, and we'll turn off the APU. Ah, did you see those two annoying uh, arrows going out? Uh, that's GSX, just click the GSX, and that'll get rid of those. Up here, we need propeaters turned on. Propeaters are now to, oh, actually, no. In this airplane, it's auto. In the 737-900, that's auto. You don't have to do those. But we do have to turn on the yaw damper. And then I usually turn my engine uh, electrical monitoring system to engine uh, generator one. At about this point in time, I'll look over. Everything's looking good. So I'm going to turn off my APU. I'm going to turn on my taxi light. We're going to look down here. Everything looks good. We're squawking mode Charlie. I'm going to come over here. We're all clear on the airplane services page, so I'm going to go and put progress over here for the co-pilot. Oh, and it's going to say, no, you can't do that. You can't do progress. You have to switch systems. So return, return, FMC, and then we can do progress. Okay, we ready to go? Parking brakes off. Nose light. Anybody over there? Nope. Anybody over there? Nope. 
you definitely need to rev up the engines here to get a 737 going. Usually the Airbus, when you release your parking brakes, it will start doing a thrust idle taxi almost immediately. 737 needs a little nudge. Once you get the airplane going though, back to thrust idle and that's pretty good for taxiing, especially in the gate area. Flaps are gonna be five. So while you're doing this, you could look outside and enjoy the flaps going down. Coffee time. Now's also a good time to check your speed brakes. Hey, speed brakes work. And out we go. Might need a little bit more of a nudge if it's a heavy airplane. And everything's looking pretty good. Our ground speed is about 9 knots. There's 10. It's 10 knots of taxi speed when you're in the gate area. You can go up a little bit more, especially if you've got, if you've got the monster long taxi out to runway eight at Denver, or if you're going to the Polderbahn at uh, uh, Amsterdam Airport. Uh, 737 is meant to, it does have a nose wheel tiller. 737 though is meant to be steered with rudder pedals unless you got to do a tight 90 degree turn or something. So rudder, pe rudder, pe rudder pedal steering. And let's see, we could also flaps are five. We could also turn on the auto brakes. 10 knots of taxi. So that's looking pretty good. Always a good idea to check your wing views just because it's fun. It's immersion. Enjoy the taxi outside. Oh, better get on the yellow line there. Now at uh, Hartsfield, one of the things you'll do is largely the ramp area is uncontrolled. But you see that little spot there, 1S? Well, if you look over here on your chart, the airport chart, it says 1S. This is usually where they want you to call in and request taxi clearance. So they always, you know, usually push and start is at your own discretion. And then it's uh, taxi at either the north or south end of the ramp, depending upon your uh, runway. So you could say, I am at one Sierra, ready for taxi, and VATSIM will be ready for you. Now it's also a really good opportunity, look down, make sure your controls will move. Make sure everything's gonna move here. Okay, that all looks good. Enjoy a little bit of the view of the airport going out. That nice old shiny engine. And if you've got everything done, you can really spend your time uh, concentrating on the taxi. I've uh, nudged the engines forward just a touch. Maybe we'll get up to about 15 to 20 knots. And as we're continuing our taxi, we're basically going to look for the Juliet taxiway. That's usually where you jump from Lima to Mike to go over here to the runway. Okay, there's 20 knots. That's probably fast enough. Again, if you were doing a monster long taxi, you might go up to 30 knots, but any more than that, ATC is going to accuse you of being naughty. And yes, the bad jokes will happen on occasion. Now might be an incredibly good opportunity to do VNAV. And if your departure takes you right off the runway, LNAV, otherwise heading hold. And that looks pretty good. And we're almost ready to go here. So one of the things that I said I was going to come back to was talking about RNAV to slaw. Okay, RNAV slaw. If you're on VATSIM here in Atlanta and you get your takeoff clearance, they are going to say United 440 run, runway 27 left clear for takeoff RNAV slaw. They expect you to say RNAV slaw or RNAV snuffy or RNAV football or RNAV grits, whichever one that lets them, them know that you know that your first waypoint is slaw and that's where you're going and they expect you to say that back so be sure that you uh, do that when they say so and a little bit of a turn here 
and then a little bit of a turn there and now we're looking for uh, the uh, Lima taxiway and Lima is the nice one so this is where they will go and do that little nice diagonal over why didn't they just send us over to Mike because if they're landing on this runway these are the high speeds over here and they're gonna put arriving traffic on Mike but once you get over here to um, the uh, Lima Juliet this little uh, diagonal thing at that point in time you're not going to be getting in the way of landing traffic getting off on a high speed so there you go so there is Delta right there and then you'll see there is our diagonal and that's going to put us over on Mike we're at 15 knots 15 knots perfectly good speed uh, to make a diagonal turn if you're doing a 90 degree turn that's going to be 10 knots in a jetliner and just a nice gentle turn like this. Now we're at 13 knots. Might want to nudge the engines forward just a bit, especially if you're in a VATSIM event. There's five other airplanes stacked up behind you. And there we are at our little Juliet. There is our turn coming on over to Mike. And then the next thing they'll usually give you is uh, one of the three entry points into the runway. There's 16 knots, looking good. We'll go back to thrust idle. And usually I get Lima Charlie. There's Lima Alpha, Lima Bravo, Lima Charlie. Usually in a 737, it's gonna be Lima Charlie is my lineup and weight. Final checks, look over at the co-pilot, all ready to go. Any, any reason not to fly? Okay, so let's go ahead and um, um, starters to uh, continuous restart. Airports, data, traffic can go on. Let's also crunch the uh, engine instruments to one monitor. Reset fuel flow. And we are coming up. Uh, second available left is Lima Charlie. And you can see, yep, there's Mike 20. Lima Charlie is what we want. Come on down here. We'll also be going uh, transponder to Terra. If there is a departure frequency, as soon as they kick me to tower, I'm going to sh uh, change my departure frequency as quick as I can. And uh, I'm going to try and do that before I get on the runway. We're going to be we're busy enough at that point in time. So presetting a frequency is absolutely mission critical. You're doing essentially the job of two people and this airplane is getting more and more complex every day so you there really is a lot to do and everything else I think is looking pretty good nothing to worry about up here I'm sure I've forgotten something and look at that it even says Lima Charlie might need a little bit of braking so there's nine knots and here we all come on up here. I might go over just a little bit and do a sharper turn. There we go. ATC is just called, says uh, runway 27 right, line up and wait. At line up and wait, the first thing I'm gonna do is get my engines going, get the airplane rolling because it could be a fast takeoff. Next thing I'm doing, entering a, a runway, I'm gonna do strobe lights on. A little differential braking goes a long way. Entering the runway, this is also when I turn on my auto throttle, or at least arm it. Coming on out here. We do have fixed and retractable landing lights. At night, I light up the airplane like a Christmas tree. During the day, maybe not. At takeoff, I will turn on my fixed landing lights. One last cabin call, and it's flying time. So, uh, clear for takeoff. Uh, RNAV to, oh, I've already forgotten. Where is our RNAV to? Over on, it should be on the legs on the floor, RNAV slaw, there we go, RNAV slaw. So what we'll do is my throttles, I'm going to manually 
advance them to 40 percent and everything looks good at 40 percent we'll go and engage auto thrust there's auto thrust engaged hands on the throttles until v1 one of the things i really so appreciate about the pmdg airplanes is the airspeed callouts on takeoff 80 knots checked that means all i have to do is look out the window and stay centered on the runway which is the way it should be all airplanes should have callouts gear and then as you take off if you can do an external view holy moly so long atlanta and then come on back in look at your flight directors if you're all by yourself i've already forgotten something transponder to terra there we go follow the flight directors it gets busy about now I have no shame about kicking that autopilot in because at this point in time they're gonna say United 441 uh, radar contact say altitude uh, altitude passing 3100 United 441 Arnav slaw climb and maintain 17,000 contact departure or maybe contact departure and then do that. So in other words, you're gonna be keeping busy, 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 busy all during this time. Uh, speed's coming on up. Flaps need to go up too. Flaps one. Slats are out. There goes our flaps. Always fun to check those out. And slats and flaps going up. Watch the leading edge slats going up. That's a good time too. There goes our slats. We are coming up on slaw. That OM there, that is the outer marker that we are flying over for run airplanes landing in the opposite direction. Doesn't mean anything to you on this flight. Passing 4,000, almost 5,000. Looking over here, our landing gear could go off and we're gonna turn off the auto brakes. Looking good here. We are in Econ Climb. Jacksonville is 261 miles away, and our estimated fuel at Jacksonville is 7.4. That's that number that I have here. Final reserve and alternate, 5.5. I usually board an extra one to 2,000 pounds of fuel, especially on a VATSIM flight. There will be delays. There will be... Uh, reasons to sit on the runway, just that's the way it is. We are, there's our turn from slaw. Always fun if you have the time to go back to a wing view and enjoy the turn. Atlanta looking particularly nice today, doesn't have the summer haze until you start looking off into the uh, distance there and if your flight plan is set up you usually do have time to go out and look out the window which is so cool in Microsoft Flight Simulator look back over your shoulder there is the airport if you're an airplane geek you you've been in you've been sitting in the window seat just like that oh wow there's the airport back there coming up on 10,000 feet right now we're gonna speed up a little bit ATC is called, climb and maintain flight level 250, 25,000 feet. So there we go. And continuing the climb, oop, another turn. Another chance to look out. There's a big highway going out of uh, Atlanta. More of the airport that we, we could see. If you're on a VATSIM event and it's 
nighttime or something. I, it's really amazing. Departing out of an airport like this, you see little twinkling lights all over the place. Those are all of the other airplanes. And there is 11,000 feet. Landing lights could go off. Nose light can go off. Let's also do a cabin call. And at 10,000 feet, I'm also going to turn off the continuous restart on my engines. That 10,000 foot cabin call, at least on all the flights that I'm a passenger on, usually at about 10,000 feet, that's when the flight attendants pop. You usually hear the doorbell, and then the flight attendants pop back on and say, um, a quick reminder, the seatbelt sign is still on. You must remain seated. Like, people just don't get that. And then they say, oh, and by the way, welcome aboard. You might check the seat pocket in front of you. We have a really nice credit card offer for you today. I would be a lousy flight attendant. I am way too sarcastic to be a flight attendant. That would be so bad. As we slowly go out, I'm going to go ahead and increase the range on my map to about 40 miles. And out we go. There's Rivet. There's 14,000 feet. We probably changed by now from departure to uh, center. Another chance to look outside and enjoy a nice turn. And if you were flying a 737 flight out of Hartsfield because of real world weather and the satellite photography scenery is pretty much what it would look like outside your window. That's how much better this is. The sim is. Okay, as we continue to make the turn around here, one of the things that I do on a Boeing is I will go and keep my heading bug updated. And I always like to keep that straight up depending upon and you know no matter what the airplane is doing I want it to show me my current heading if the autopilot fails this is how I remember which direction to fly and last night on VATSIM I was in the Embraer the uh, E-175 from Flight Sim Studios and everything failed uh, the, the, the landing was pretty tragic after that and that airplane is still in development unlike this airplane but the entire autopilot failed uh, and it wouldn't disengage and I had to just fight the autopilot all the way down for a VATSIM event into LaGuardia. Speed is coming up, there's 16,000 feet and all is right with the world. Nothing to worry about here. We are 236 miles from Jacksonville. Our speed is looking pretty good. ATC might call and tell you to speed it up or slow it down. Mostly they're going to do that on uh, as you're coming into an airport. Unless you're departing, you know, like one of those city pairs and everybody's going from Atlanta to Jacksonville or something. Coming up on 18,000 feet. A nice smooth day to fly. Just a couple of little bumps out there. and 18,000 feet and within about 200 feet you'll notice the uh, altimeter setting changes to yellow there's 200 come on out there it goes it's sometimes let's hit standard altimeter and if it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood I'm gonna hit the attendant uh, button again let the cabin crew know that they can get up and start doing cabin crew things and there is varsity, ATC is called, climb and maintain, final cruising altitude, 35,000 feet. 34 and 35,000 feet. We are flying real time. It is now 1425 Zulu. And it says that we are going to be landing right around 1500 Zulu today. Right around 1500 Zulu. There is varsity, sometimes ATC will call and say United 441 uh, direct to Nokia. So take that at Nokia and execute it. That, they'll do that to move you further along uh, in, the, in the flight. And if there's no airplanes ahead, they're gonna move you forward 
like that a lot. And so that might shave a minute or two off your arrival time, but mostly it moves you forward. So instead of going all the way to Varsity, we're going straight over to Noki. The weather on this uh, on Navigraph has become absolutely amazing. This is mean sea level pressure. We can go and take a quick look at radar for our flight. And we'll go and stop at tracking and just go like this. So here is radar. And you can see, ah, very nice day for flying today. Little bit of a, maybe some showers along the coast there. Looking over here, I'm also gonna look at icing. And I keep my icing level at about flight level 220 going up, coming down. That seems to be a nice happy medium. And icing looks like it's pretty general here. Ah, there is some icing as you zoom out though, but nothing really to worry about for our flight today. So icing is not a thing. You could also look at turbulence, see if we got any turbulence. Uh, summertime, a really great level, uh, something to check. Uh, is down here, it's called vertical velocity. Vertical velocity, as I understand it, is air going whoosh like that, straight up. If you've got that, that's what the meteorologists call convection. And if you've got convection like that, that means you've got a chance that that could be where the thunderstorms are. So vertical velocity is really cool to check out in the, uh, in the summertime. I usually leave this on icing, and that's going to be the big deal, especially during the winter months. And all of this is looking good. Top climb's looking great. Coming up on 25,000 feet if there's, no, um, if there's no turbulence or anything like that as we go to 25,000 feet. This is usually when I'm going to go over here and do seat belts to auto. No smoking has become a chime only. That pretty much the smoking lights are always on. Uh, in the airplanes these days, uh, they're also turning those into the devices. Uh, this airplane does not model cabin signs and stuff, which is just fine. I mean, it's nice when they do, but you can kind of see we got a nice cabin here. It, it's pretty good. I think this one also has a small first class cabin. A uh, little bit more leg room here at uh, the emergency exits. So a little more leg room there. And yeah, you can see, so three by three seating here. And as we continue to move forward, there is, uh, looks like we got four rows of uh, first class seats here. Again, not an awful lot of modeling in the cabin. Things are really kind of flat. You know, there's the galley, pretty flat. Cockpit door doesn't open, but they're saving frame rates like that. So nice to have a cabin to go zipping around in, but you don't really need that. So there you go. This is kind of how it is that I will go and use uh, the uh, flight management system like this. I really do like this. Um, we have a performance tool. We can also use that. Uh, landing dispatch. I believe that this is the page that you're going to go and check your, um, this is, um, let's see, there's two of them. There's landing in route and there's landing dispatch. I think that this is what you use to check the runway and make sure that you're at your, uh, what you're expecting your weights to be in all. Uh, this is what it is that you uh, should expect to make sure you can land there before you take off. And then landing in route, this is what we're going to do for, um, for our uh, uh, actual landing. So reversers, auto brakes, packs are going to be on at about five knots to the speed. And all of that looks good. Up, oh, you can see my little bug is off to the side. We're going to come up here. And that's really what I do in the Boeing is I just keep that centered. Every now and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to look and see what my uh, estimated fuel on board is for landing. Call that the EFOB, estimated fuel on board. 
and s make sure that that is uh, above uh, final reserve and alternate. That way, if I've got to go around, I can go around and all of that's pretty good. And that is essentially the flight. There we are, passing 27,000 feet. Everything's good here. Lights are the way they're supposed to be. Real pilots are gonna come over here. They're gonna take a look at the pressurization, make sure that the cabin is climbing, make sure that the cabin altitude is not up here in the danger zone. Excuse me for the sniff. There's still some allergies around here, even though it's winter time. Next thing that I might do uh, prior to landing, and this is way, way early in the grand scheme of real world flying, I might come on down here and if I know that we are gonna be landing on runway eight, I will go and put in the ILS now. 110.7 is gonna be our ILS, 11070. If there is a VOR over the uh, center of the airport, I will put that VOR in over here on this side. That's gonna give me two distances to the airport here on VOR1 and VOR2. The next thing I'll do is come up here to the uh, course and I will put in the inbound course for this flight. It's going to be 077 degrees. So 077, again, this is monster, ridiculously early preparations. But again, you're one person in a complex simulated airplane and if you're on VATSIM the sooner you get this sort of stuff done the better because you're just going to be so busy and then the last thing I'll do is I'll come over here and I'm going to look down here and I'm going to get my um, minimums and that's going to be 230 feet so over here it's going to be Barrow and 230 feet 230 and so I'm adjusting uh, the dial up here, and there's 230 feet. And uh, uh, so at this point in time, we're all set up for the landing that we're expecting. And 90% of the time, hey, I don't have to change it. And as ATC starts switching us around, speeding us up, slowing us down, making a turn 30 degrees to the right for spacing, uh, all of this just makes your life so much easier uh, to come on in and do this. So we're at 31,000 feet. If we come on over here to the cruise page, you can see that we are, oh, holy moly, 34 miles from top of descent. Eek. It's a good thing we got uh, prepared for this, isn't it? So if we come on over here, our, uh, we don't need Atlanta. We're not going back to Atlanta. So I'm going to go to my list of charts here, and I'm going to get rid of my Atlanta charts. Don't need them. On the O'Day arrival, we are expecting them to, at some point in sign time, call us up and say, United 441, cleared to descend on the O'Day 1 arrival. Um, uh, Jacksonville landing northeast. So that gives us an idea of which transition, we've already got it plugged in, and 3,000 feet and 210 knots. As soon as they say that you're clear to descend via the arrival, that's when I'll come in and put the altitude uh, for the bottom of the star in here in my altitude window. Now, that tells me that I am cleared to descend. I don't have to descend yet, you know, clear to descend means the airplane's going to do it when it's ready. But when I put that number in there, that says, ooh, I have been cleared by ATC to descend. I can do my descent thing. And if you look there, there is our top of descent already showing up. How about that? So see how getting ready? I thought I actually had time to go over and get more coffee. Boy, was I wrong. Boy, was I wrong. Okay, we could come over here, and we know that our runway for landing is going to be runway 8. So that looks pretty good. There's the airport. There's our heading, the slope, the length. It's dry. Let's uh, import our aircraft details. So it says 134, 244. 
That could be our current weight. It might be our projected landing rate. I'm not sure. Uh, reverser config. We are going, our reversers are operational. I'm going to do auto brakes three. Uh, let's see, non-normal condition up. Uh, no non-normal conditions. Everything's groovy. Flaps 30. I'm going to be the 737s. I do better with a uh, flaps 30 landing than a 40 landing. So that's good. I'm going to leave my packs on. Uh, Anti-ice. Let's import the weather. There is the outside air temperature. No wind. Ah, the altimeter. 30.10. This is something I really like about the, the Boeing. I can go and put that in here, 30.10. See how it's in white letters down here below standard? That means all I have to do is push a button and transition as opposed to dial it in when we're busier. That's really nice. And now let's go ahead and hit calculate. So VREF is 142. That's going to be our weight of our landing, our runway. We have a 9,000 foot runway. I only need 5,000 feet to land everything's going to be good. So that's landing in route. Again, I think this is the one the landing dispatch is what you do before you take off. I could be completely wrong about that. And as we come down here, top of descent's getting closer. So at this point, as we get closer, I go from 80 to 40 on my map. And all of this is looking pretty good. You can see we're about 25 miles. It says 2.2 miles to top of descent. Oh, oh, that's deceleration. That's top of descent. Holy cats, we're descending now. More coffee needed. Jeez. Flight attendants, could we please have some coffee up here? Maybe pizza and beer too when we land. And okay, now we've got descent deviation. So that's going to tell us, are we above or below the optimum descent path? It's going to keep in mind what constraints there might be and meet those constraints. This airplane is amazing for a big VATSIM event. I was flying the Embraer, and I really am enjoying the Embraer, but I was flying that in a couple of VATSIM events, and it does not have VNAV. So you have to do that manually. It's a fun challenge, and obviously I have a weird definition of fun, but there you go. Oh, now all of a sudden you can see we are now, um, uh, it slowed our descent down a little bit. Probably because, oh, uh, or does it need us to slow down? Did it not do, oh, it's tried to meet this constraint here. We have to be below flight level 280. We are a little bit high. And you can see it's kind of trying to re recalculate all that for us. But generally, I think we're in pretty good shape. Coming in a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and start arming speed brakes, auto brakes three. Again, ridiculously early uh, in the normal flight, you know, flight, you know, uh, to-do list of a flight but again one person in the cockpit you need to be able to uh, be ready to go coming up on 25,000 feet that's the next time uh, next thing for me with that'll be seat belts this is also might be a time that ATC is going to call up and say speed it up and slow it down especially if you're in a big event and uh, there's going to be lots going on. I'm going to, now that we know about all of this, I'm going to come over here to the electronic flight bag. Let's come on over to this. And despite all of my yammering about, uh, about this, uh, I am going to go over here to Navigraph, Search, Arrival, Airport. And I'm going to go and grab this and put that in there and make it pinned airport jacks clear that and then uh, zoom this in a little bit so all of that's good and it's right over there and I can see it we're landing on runway 8 we might be able to get the hotel or golf taxiway 
and then that's going to take us back into the terminal. One of the things that they will say on VATSIM when you're just getting off the runway and you are monster ridiculously crazy busy is uh, after the minute your wheels touch the ground, United 441, welcome to Jacksonville, exit right when able, contact ground point nine. Ah, I'm busy. So one of the things I'll do is I'll look ahead and see if there is ground control. And as soon as I get kicked over to tower from approach, I'm gonna preload in that ground control frequency. So all I have to do is hit one button. Because again, you're ridiculously busy at that point in time and you don't have time to dial in a frequency as fast as ATC would like you. As soon as you get over to ground, you'll say, uh, Jacksonville ground, United 441's off runway eight at hotel. They'll say, welcome to Jacksonville, United 441, say parking. Okay, that is not the uh, opportunity for a amateur comedian like me to repeat them and say, okay, parking. They don't think that that's very funny. What they are saying is, do you have a gate in mind? Well, I don't know, what, I, what were you talking about, gate? So what you could do is, if you'd like a little immersion and a little bit of fun, come on over to Flight Radar 24 or Flight Aware, KJAX, Jacksonville, and we're gonna look down here at arriving flights. Is there a United flight here? Here's Delta, South, ah, here's a United flight from Newark Liberty. And Newark Liberty, ah, at Jacksonville, a United flight is going to gate A6. Hey, guess what that means we can do? Ah, uh, let's see, do we know where A6 is? Uh, there it is. So then what you could do is in your flight notes, you could come over here and put in A6. So when ground control says, you know, United 441, taxi to the terminal via Alpha and hotel, say parking, you can say Alpha 6. Now, if Alpha 6 isn't free, they'll give you another gate, but at least you have an answer for them. Coming up on 18,000 feet, uh, during all of that, I forgot, usually at 25,000 feet, I'm gonna go seatbelts to on. Put passengers in their seats. Coming up on transition altitude. Altitude. More coffee, please. Uh, at this point in time, uh, within about 200 feet, that green STD is going to turn to yellow. There it goes. And then you hit the standard altimeter button, and it automatically puts in the altitude you've pre-dialed, which is so nice and such a time saver. The one thing I wish Boeing would do is like Airbus. Airbus at uh, uh, altimeter transition, that flashes at you. This thing just turns yellow. I kind of miss the flashing. It's sort of like, hey, do something about me. And I'll just go flying along. Oh, it's yellow. Yeah, well, there's other yellow stuff here too. But again, that, that's kind of the way that is. We're doing pretty good right now. Uh, we might be a touch fast, so it could be you might need a little bit of speed brake here. Let's do um, one little click of the speed brakes. Not much, just a little, and see if that would, ah, see that's going to get us down to the speed that the airplane wanted us at. Usually on a VATSIM event right now, you do not get to do a smooth and by the numbers VNAV descent never happens. They're going to be changing your altitudes and your speeds constantly. All you can do is go with it. And there we are. Now we're looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and put speed brakes back. And if you use them, you got to rearm them. And passing 14,000 feet. Auto brakes are set. Speed brakes are set. We have not uh, done our landing altitude. Unable 250 knots at Kipple, it always is doing that. I'm a bad pilot, I usually ignore them. I could have gone and gone online and requested our descent winds. Uh, this is also where you would change the transition level if you're in Europe. 
uh, Asia someplace else, and the transition levels are something other than flight level 180. This is where you would change that on descent forecast. Forecast uplink is ready. Load them. There's our descent winds. We can execute those and we'll come over to init ref. And I'm doing, and yes, I, I, I know we can't do 250 knots at Kippel. I'm going to go and select my speed 137 for landing with 30 degrees of flaps. And that's usually what I'll do there. I'm just turning off the heat on the empty coffee mug. For flight simming, especially in the winter, some sort of a heated coffee mug is really, really nice. Everything's looking pretty good here. We may need speed brakes here at Kipple since it's, you know, annoying us about that. We've already got the uh, ILS set, so that's pretty good. Coming up on 12,000 feet. Again, we're going to have a break after C dot. So it's going to be vectors. So we're going to get ready. What is our heading? 153, 153. Good. We're ready for vectors. Oh, it's changing already. So looks like it's going to be 150, 149. So we're all up 148. So if we have to do vectors, which we will, it's all ready to go up. Oh, see, there's C dot right there. And then there's Libby right there. So chances are ATC is going to break us off, maybe even as early as Kitso before we get to CDOT. We may need to also be ready to reduce our speed. Fact is, look at this, our speed's going down. Speed brakes again. And a little more speed brake coming on in to get down to 250. ATC just called and said, no, 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 you're going way too fast. Uh, maintain 210 knots. So speed intervention, and now we're going to put 210 in the window. So speed's going down. There's 10,000 feet. I'll do landing lights, taxi light, 10,000 foot cabin call, and that looks pretty good. Speed's still coming down. Let's go ahead, and we're going to bring the map in now from 40 to 20. And it will let it go to Kitso. There's 250. Technically, we're a little fast at the moment. I'm going to bring my uh, heading bug over and put it on top of Kitso there. So we slowed down a little bit too late. Nothing really to worry about here below 10,000 feet. Uh, starters to continuous if you have to go around if it's raining ooh, looks like you can see the little uh, course line flapping around there we may have some slightly we may have some slight uh, uh, bounces on landing today passing 8,000 feet our speed is still slowing down could be we're not slowing down fast enough for ATC Usually by now, though, long before now is when they're going to get us to that speed. You might need a little more speed brake. We're not slowing down very fast, are we? Below about 230. So flap speed, you could do 250. How about flaps one? That's gonna help us slow down even more, put a little more drag out there. Uh, flaps two is 250. We could do flaps two. There's a little bit of flap flowing out there. That's gonna help slow us down. Ah, see, now we're getting close. Put speed brakes away. Now we're at 210. Re rear rearm those speed brakes. That looks good. Coming up on 7,000 feet. Here comes C dot. Getting ready to go to. Um, uh, getting ready to go to um, um, heading select. Everything's good to go up here. Nothing really to worry about. 
Everything else is nice and set. Okay, I just pressed the button. You notice that my simulator has frozen. The altitude has frozen. Everything has stopped. At this point in time, especially if you're going into an airport where you've got nice uh, custom scenery, that's the, uh, we're stopping everything, you have to load in the scenery. So that is one of the things that happens, the best thing to do, and it's doing it again. And so that is a thing. The best thing to do is when this is going on, let it go through it. It should be fine. You can see all of a sudden it does catch up. But the scenery loading really can be a problem. If, if you start doing things. Aha, okay, here's Libby, here's CDOT. ATC is gonna call and probably say United 441, turn right, heading 170, join the localizer for runway eight. Heading select. So at some point they might do that. Uh, United 441, descend and maintain 2000. So we'll put 2000 in the window. So we might do that too. How about flaps five? There goes flaps five. Little more flap going out there. And you can see we're heading right towards Libby. Over here, you can see in the window, it's yellow, it says IJAX 077 and there's a line through it. That is the radio looking for your ILS. And when it turns uh, another color and the lines go away, that means it's found it. We're still a little far out right now. We are currently, good time to check the fuel, 25 miles out and we're expecting to have 7,200 pounds of fuel. Remember we needed 5,900 pounds uh, for final reserve and alternate. Basically it means that all is right with the world. And it looks like we're on a good 90 degree turn here for Libby. So you can see CDOT really kind of put us right in here. Passing 4,000 feet. There's a good chance that ATC might call and say, United 441, 180 knots, 200 knots. They might even say, speed it up a little bit. One of the spy pilots that was flying along with us yeah, last night on VATSIM, they were like 310 knots until about five mile finals into LaGuardia last night, just as they were trying to move so many airplanes through. Aha, we've got a little pink diamond here. We could be starting to pick up the localizer. And it looks like we are doing pretty good, about uh, eight miles away from Libby. And now might be a time that ATC is going to call and say United 441 uh, cleared for the ILS runway 8, uh, maintain 2,000 feet until established, and 180 knots until 5 miles DME. So speed down to 180. Now might be a good time to do landing gear. How about wheels? There comes our landing gear. That's going to help slow us down even more. Usually they don't bring you in at a 90, de at 90 degrees to your runway like this. Ah, we could do another click of flaps. Flaps 10. Gear is down three green. We're still got a little line through that, but at least it's looking. And now is when I'll go and do one more click of the map. Now we're on the 10 mile range. We're a little bit on the high side right now. So we could probably go down a little bit faster, vertical speed. And I'm gonna kick my vertical speed up here just a little bit. We're a little high. 
now we're getting now we're talking that's a little bit better we may need to go and reduce this just a little to fudge us down below the glide slope let's go ahead and help out the uh, ILS here a bit we're gonna make our turn now and I'm gonna arm the approach Passengers back here anxiously looking to see if there's any alligators down there waiting for us as you're coming on in you basically uh, sit back a little bit here uh, Be sure that your um, uh, Can reach your rudder pedals up the localizer has got us and VOR localizer is green glide slope is still white that means it's armed I got the airport, I got the runway right there. We're all looking pretty good there. And everything else is looking pretty good. So there's about 1,700 feet. So I probably didn't need to go down after all. At this point in time, I'm gonna run through my just through my head here on this uh, I'm gonna go and do gear down three green auto brakes speed brakes gear down three green right above the gear lever auto brakes armed speed brakes set I said those backwards the speed brakes are over here the auto brakes are over on the other side I'm gonna remind myself of my v-app speed 137 plus one is 138 looking pretty good here comes the runway so we're about seven miles so 138 and is our landing speed and we'll let it slow down there glide slopes coming on down we can do flaps 15. there's the outer marker remember that from our departure now we care about that flaps 20. Uh, actually 25 and then 30 and we should be snagging the glide slope any minute now there we go we got that and flaps are 30 speed set at this point in time we probably have gotten kicked over to tower I'm gonna make sure there's no ground control if there is ground I'm gonna put that in my standby frequency again I'm letting the airplane do the flying until I get those things set up for me we're established on the ILS uh, I'm gonna go and uh, my uh, throttles physically in the airplane my my thrustmaster controllers are still at 40% I'm gonna move those up just a touch get ready to take control of the airplane and then one last time auto gear down auto brakes speed brakes and then the last thing I'm gonna do is look at that wind arrow and see where it's coming from it's from the left it's gonna blow me to the right it's actually kind of helpful to kind of remind yourself of those directions AP is off captain's got the airplane when we're ready to uh, get off the uh, get off the runway we've got ground control set ah you might see the simulator has frozen again I'm not gonna click buttons but it is, you know, it's a really nice payware scenery that just came out. But they, you know, probably need to do some optimization on that. Up, oh, see, we got another one. Not good. This would be a problem on Batsim right now. Is these kinds of these kinds of things loading in? Because over on the Batsim scope, I, it I, it's got to look like up oh, airplanes frozen and five other airplanes behind you, that's gonna be a problem. 500. So nice scenery, but they need to do uh, optimization to make sure that doesn't happen so much. A little low. Auto throttles off, landing. One hundred. Fifty. 
30, 20, 10. Reverse, little heavy on my landing. Reversers are green. Reverse thrust. Fifty knots. Stow the reversers. Auto brakes off. Manual braking. Off on the high speed. Speed brakes down. This is about when they say ground point nine. Welcome to blah blah blah. So I got one button to hit. Jacksonville ground United 441s off runway eight. Parking tonight is uh, Alpha 6. And around we go. Flaps can go up as we're coming on in. Flaps are going up. Auto brakes can go off. APU can go on. Strobes can go off. Landing lights should have gone off off the runway. And then we look over here. And we kind of come up there. There's our airplane. Next available left is going to be hotel. So we're already uh, ready to go there. And there you go. That's that's kind of the way this works. Uh, the electronic flight bag. Uh, some people are a little disappointed in the electronic flight bag. I, I can't whine a lot about it. I've been happy with it. It adds incredibly nice functionality for your takeoff speeds. And I need to learn to use the landing a little bit better. Uh, it's also nice to have the uh, chart here like this so that we can see up oh, there's our turn. And uh, that's nice to have that like the real pilots are going to have. Uh, let's see, there's about nine knots. We got a 90 degree turn here, so nine knots is about right. You can see there was a checkerboard, uh, uh, black and yellow checkerboard line there that might have been a hold short point for airplanes taxiing out of the gate area as opposed to airplanes coming on in so again really nice new airport here for Jacksonville this is a great uh, um, hopping off point for a lot of VATSIM events now and there's 14 knots coming into the gate area and you can see we're coming in here and our gate is going to be Alpha 9 so we're gonna go off to the left here and everything's looking good to go up here we can turn off continuous restart too on the ground Alpha 9 is going to be oh wait a minute what do we say Alpha 6 excuse me Alpha 6 so it's two from the end and then around we go over here so it's going to be over that way it's really cool okay there's another one of those checkerboard lines here so we are now entering what would be considered ramp control and a lot of atsim controllers at this point in time from here on out they don't care uh you, you know you're responsible for your own traffic collision avoidance as you come on around so that's usually what they mean push and start is at your own discretion so that is alpha eight yep there's alpha eight our next our gate is alpha six there's alpha eight a don't be fooled alpha six is coming up that's our jetway it even says alpha six sometimes it's hard to see that coming on around if you happen to have a moment as you're coming in now be a good time to go and uh, flip your generators over you may need a little bit of oomph coming in oomph also known as thrust and let's see don't see that we have safe dock or gate guidance coming in so as you come in, no shame in going outside the airplane and tilting up to see where you might stop. 
and you can see that it even has a few things. So there is, uh, let's see, this is an ERJ E170 Airbus 75320 737-800. So they even, they actually have a marking for this airplane. So that's kind of nice to see. So we'll add a little bit of power to get us going again. And parking gates, so parking brakes on. And there goes our engines. That can go down here. We'll also flip on the APU bleed and the cross bleed. Seat belts can go off. We'll turn off the anti-collision lights. Do that nose light as we're coming on in too. Don't have to worry about uh, probe heaters on this airplane. And we'll turn off a couple of those uh, fuel. As we come on out here, you could probably get a uh, good old GSX. It's probably gonna give us a jetway maybe. So how about a jetway? And it'll even give you the opportunity to choose your airline. And here comes a jetway. And that looks pretty good. And we're here. Welcome, welcome. We made it. I hope you enjoyed this. I do hope that this helps out a little bit. Um, actually, it's a pretty good looking airport. This is one of those airports that even the inside of the terminal uh, is modeled. Hey, something I always like to say about flights like these. This is, uh, uh, I've been live streaming for a while, been flight simming since forever. This is not about the right way versus the wrong way. This is what I have found that works for me. And my hope is, is that this is something that works for you too. I'm still relatively new here on uh, YouTube. And so uh, definitely I'm appreciative of any uh, subscriptions or follows that you might want to do uh, on my channel. Uh, some shares would be nice as well. Uh, I uh, also want to invite you to uh, come on over to the spy flight over on Twitch. Uh, that might be a good time too. We fly every day, Tuesday through Sunday on Twitch and uh, everything is a group flight. We're flying all over the world in all the fun airplanes and you're welcome to join us there. If you really liked what you saw, uh, you could see at the bottom there is a uh, Kofi. Uh, come on over to Twitch if you really liked it. A subscription over there would be most appreciated. I have also recently launched a Patreon with uh, a little bit more of an advanced flight briefing each day. You'll find a link to that in the description below. In the meantime, we made it. I hope you are having as much fun with this airplane as I am, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the friendly skies. In the meantime, though, as always, this is about the point when I like to say stay healthy and stay safe. And I will see you in the friendly sim skies. Cheers.